Welcome back to the show as we continue our conversation with Assemblyman Chad Mays about the midterm elections, the propositions, and those hotly contested races. Now, Assemblyman Mays isn't seeking re-election, and as someone who has certainly been in the inside of politics, he joins us as our political analyst here at NBC Palm Springs. So welcome back, Chad, for round two of our Decision 2022 discussion. Yeah, it's great to be here. We had a great, uh, great time on Tuesday night, so... Hopefully you can carry this on. Yes, we cover 26 and 27, the props on Tuesday. So if you're interested in seeing those, we have them on our social media, on our website as well. But tonight we are covering prop 30 and prop 29. That's right. So That's two, right. two interesting props. I think they've gotten maybe a little less press time than 26 and 27. The yeah. sports betting has been stealing all the spotlight. But I have seen a lot of political commercials about prop 30. Yeah. Uh, it's a clean air initiative. We've got the text up there for you. Now it's, well, sometimes you get a little bit of a red flag for voters when you see a jump in personal income tax. But uh, help break it down for us. Who actually would be affected by this raise in taxes? Well, so uh, th it's, a, it's, a, it's a tax uh, rate increase for uh, those who have over $2 million of income in California. It goes up 1.75%. So. If you know that California has the highest income tax rate of any state in the, in the nation, um, and so for those top earners pay an awful lot. So we'll go from 13.03 um, to then over 15%, because you had on 1.75%. Uh, so over 15% is what the, the tax rate would be for incomes over $2 million. This, uh, this proposition actually would, uh, would bring in about three and a half to $5 billion annually and the idea behind it is that that money would go towards uh, zero emission vehicles or providing some sort of tax incentives for a zero emission vehicle so let me now that we've done that let's yes. back all the way up and go how is this how did this even get on the ballot yes what what's going on here well let's start back of may of last year may of 2021 when the california air resources board uh had a, a new regulation they instituted that said all ride sharing companies had to have zero emission vehicles or really electric vehicles by 2030, or should say 90% by 2030. Well, then fast forward, uh, if you're uh, Lyft and Uber, the ride-sharing companies, you're like, well, wait a minute, our guys, you know, the, the folks who are out driving vehicles, they drive their own their own cars. How can we see if they're, you know, we got to create some incentives, uh, Lyft is saying, because Lyft is one that f is funding this, create incentives for them. So uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, pretty fascinating. If you look at the folks who are supporting uh, this uh, this measure, I've already lost my screen here. Um, it's uh, fascinating. You've got uh, on one hand, you have uh, Cal Fire, you've got the electrical workers, you've got the California Democratic Party, you have Lyft, and then you've got environmental groups. Then you've got the opponents of this. So I just said the California Democratic Party is in support. But wait a minute, Gavin Newsom, the governor, um, is saying, no, I'm not supporting this at all. In fact, he's standing with the California Republican Party and also the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, along with the, the Teachers Association and other in opposition, because they think this isn't very good, very good policy. That was actually going to be my next question for you. When you see the governor, and he's been actively, I've seen a lot of commercials, a lot of time spent going against Prop 30, going against his own party, what does that say to you as a voter? Does it get a little confusing if you typically vote Democratic? What do you choose here? Well, I think it, uh, I think it does. And in fact, uh, with the Democratic Party coming out and endor endorsing this, you would assume that there's going to be a lot of support. Um, in fact, there's a lot of public support for taxing, uh, uh, ta taxing the, the, the wealthy. All of a sudden, you get Gavin Newsom coming in saying, well, wait, 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 wait. Um, and, uh, and his ads have been, um, been, been pretty real. And what he's saying is, look, this is a way for um, the taxpayers to bail out uh, these corporations, these ride-share corporations. And so um, I, my guess is the, the, if there was support for it before, that's beginning to diminish with Gavin Newsom's opposition to it. Very interesting. And you mentioned that just over 15 percent uh, income tax rate for the two million and above for income. In a state like ours, where we already have the highest income tax rates, do you see that affecting the state? Do you see those people who are already getting taxed extremely high going, if this, another tax comes down on us from this next proposition, you know, do I leave California? Do I invest elsewhere? Could you see it possibly a trickle down effect if something like that were to take place? Uh, we, that, that's been an argument that has been made for uh, for a long time. And uh, California has had very high income tax rates right across uh, the border into Nevada. There is no state in, income tax. That's why you see areas like Lake Tahoe, the Nevada side. You'll see a lot of very wealth, uh, wealthy folks that will live right there just across the border so they don't have to pay a California in income tax. It's fascinating, of course, though, because uh, and I can get into to, to, to more of this. 
this, but I, we haven't seen that flight just yet of people who are wealthy. In fact, the data has shown that it's, it's, it's folks with resources that are coming into California, it's the people that are leaving California are those that can't afford to be here any longer and are, and are moving out. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, we'll transition to Prop 29 now. We've got, uh, it's a dialysis prop. And I, I was kind of talking about this with you earlier. I think it's the last three election cycles we see a dialysis prop on the ballot. And it's kind of interesting is looking at the numbers, only about 80,000 Californians rely on dialysis out of a state with about 40 million residents. Why do we see this keep coming up on the ballot, and, and what exactly is it suggesting? Well, you're getting right to the heart of this. Uh, if you'd say, why is this the third time now <laughs> that we're talking about uh, about these these clinics, these dialysis clinics? Well, here's why. Uh, there are two large uh, dialysis clinics in uh, the state of California, uh, Davida and Fresenius. We have those here in the in the valley, and they make up 75 percent of the market share for those uh, that need that need dialysis. Well, there's another organization called uh, SC. SEIU and it's SEIU UHW. That's a labor organization that wants uh, to unionize for Sinius and, and DeVita. And they continue to keep putting these initiatives up to try to rough them up a little bit to use it as a lever uh, to get um, them to sign uh, uh, some bargaining agreements with, with them. So that's what this is all about. At the end of the day, it's all about uh, that fight between SEIU and for Sinius and DeVita. And the, I've looked at the numbers, too, for um, the unions that are putting this on the ballot. It looks like they've spent about $80 million. So it seems like this is a very important issue for them. They're asking for there to be a physician on hand at the clinics, a little bit more reporting. But we're hearing from some dialysis patients saying that this could potentially shut down some clinics because it would, it would be uh, too expensive for them to maintain. Does the cost of this proposition fall on the individual clinics or would this eventually become part of the state's budget? Well, th that's a great question because uh, Medicare, um, the federal uh, government, is, is going to pick up most of the tab for uh, for services at dialysis clinics. A little bit of Medi-Cal uh, and then a little bit uh, of private insurers, but most of this is going to be, be born on the backs of, of Medicare, so the taxpayers are going to have to front, front, front the bill. Very interesting. Third time that we've seen it. Uh, do you think they'll push for a fourth if it fails this time? You never know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I mean, right now, I think if you looked at polling, it's probably doing pretty well because you look at just the face of it and you think, okay, this, you know, I could vote for that. Why not? Just have, have physicians there. I think uh, as ads are beginning to know a side begins to ratchet things up again, my guess is uh, this, this won't get the support and, uh, and, and you never know what's going to happen uh, then in 2024. Definitely. Very interesting. Uh, Chad, again, thank you for your conversation. Anything you'd like to add on 30 or Prop 29 that we didn't get to so far? The, the one thing I do want to say is for those people that are home, they're always looking for unbiased information. Uh, the Legislative Analyst Office, the state of California, is probably your best bet. Um, you can go to lao.ca.gov to be able to get uh, really up-to-date, unbiased, uh, nonpartisan information. Wonderful. All right. Thanks again for joining us. And we will be having these conversations every Tuesday and Thursday leading up to Election Day. And then Assemblyman Mays will be here live on Election Night. That's November 8th. We'll be breaking down all of the results. And you can find these conversations on our website as well as our YouTube page if you missed part of it during this show. We're back after this break. Stay with us.